Welcome to Tech Art Academy. I have exciting news for Unreal filmmakers. Epic just released footage from their Unreal Fest 2022 panel on a lot of new tools available in UE5, and I wanted to condense the information down for you and give you the highlights. Unreal is focused on designing toward integration with the existing film industry, which means instead of trying to create new technology to disrupt the industry and change how it works, they're focused on integrating in the most natural way possible and making the transition from traditional filmmaking to virtual production as seamless as possible. This is actually a big deal, and I think it's a big part of the reason that Unreal's integration with the film industry is happening so fast. Typically, a change this big would take a long time to really build up and would gain adoption slowly over a long period of time, but it's still very new and seeing incredibly rapid adoption in the existing industry. Unreal filmmaking has essentially spawned new careers and is becoming its own industry in a way. Because the focus is on designing intuitively to complement the existing film industry, this also means that all of the workflows, terminology, and structure of the traditional film industry still applies. Instead of making current filmmakers and their collective knowledge obsolete and replacing them, it is just essentially offering them new tools and making the process of filmmaking more accessible. It's always scary when new technology comes into a legacy established industry and totally disrupts it to the point that passion artists who worked in the industry for decades, or even generation to generation in many instances, become obsolete. When this happens, these dedicated, passionate people are often quickly replaced, never to work in the industry again. A classic example of this is when computer-generated effects took the film industry by storm and put the old VFX masters out of a job. Stephen came up with the idea of, uh, well, I think, you know, let's go ahead and let's do Jurassic. The time's right, I have a slot, but he wasn't thinking of CG. And we we're going to use Phil Tippett, who was considered at the time the best in stop motion. Stop motion essentially is, is that if you wanted to have a dinosaur walk, you're posing it, you take a picture, then you do the next pose and you take that picture. We were just kind of coming in and saying, well, what if we can do this? Wouldn't it make a much more dynamic film? It looked incredibly fluid like real bones sort of walking around by themselves. And Dennis brought down the film, and it was one of those incredible moments. You know, every now and then when you're involved in an industry, something happens and you know that it's just incredibly groundbreaking, and it's gonna change everything. And this was one of those moments. Every single one of us jumped to our feet because we couldn't believe what we were looking at. Phil Tippett, in a moment, realized what he was doing was obsolete. Stan Winston saw at that moment that technology was gonna to begin to encroach on what it was he did. It was clear to everybody that the movie industry was changing. Everybody was stunned about the work in the film. Everybody wanted to see the movie, everyone was excited about the movie, everyone wanted, wanted to know how we made the movie. It was just unbelievable. It was one of those movies that became a phenomenon. It changed pop culture. And once everybody saw that, I mean, I think that's when Phil got the phone call and said, you know, we, we're not doing the stop motion anymore, that's what we're going to do, computer graphics. Fortunately, Epic seems to have steered away from this sort of result and made an effort to approach this in the opposite direction. This is really a stroke of genius on their part, and is exciting news for both traditional filmmakers and also for indie filmmakers who don't have the same access, leverage, and budget to compete with larger studios. There's a strong parallel here with what Unreal and other engines did for the gaming industry by making professional tools available to everyone instead of being locked behind a gate that only a select few have access to. Now a single artist essentially has access to studio level tools for free, which is just insane. I'm excited to see how this progresses and what will be possible for smaller creators to achieve as Unreal becomes more and more able to provide tools that will help filmmakers achieve their creative vision. Alright, let's get into the highlights. The first major focus is with previs. This is crucial in filmmaking, especially modern films where big budget productions can have thousands of effect shots. Previs saves huge amounts of time and money because it essentially lets the filmmakers rehearse and work through any potential pitfalls before actually committing real-world resources and allows them to refine their vision and capture the best possible result. In terms of cinematography, it's very useful because it allows for blocking, staging, lighting setups, and shot choice before anyone ever sets foot onto the physical location. This is amazing for both small teams and large teams. For a small team that can't hire all the people it would take to have a truly professional setup, they can have the virtual equivalent and then execute the real film based on a tried and true plan. With a large company, this allows them to find out what resources they need, how they would be utilized, and then relay that to the proper departments in a way that is more three-dimensional and detailed 
than if it were done without that level of previs. Next is post viz. This helps to massively speed up the process of filmmaking by allowing for a sort of digital rough cut of the effects to get the foundation in place for final shots. The example they gave at Unreal Fest was they had 1500 shots to complete for an Amazon show and their timeline was a week and a half, which is just completely insane. This allows filmmakers to lock in the final edit far faster while maintaining a high level of quality. They gave very little information on post viz beyond that but I think that's sufficient for a fundamental understanding. Next is gamification. Gamification is actually really cool. Essentially, what the goal is with gamification is to hand off a lot of the work to the director and other creatives without them having to acquire all the technical knowledge and skills to use the Unreal Engine tools, which frees up work for the technicians and also makes the process a lot more seamless and faster overall. This way, the director also has more control to dial in exactly what they want. Here's an example. In this scene, they want to capture footage of a plane, and gamification is set up so that it's pretty much like game development with Unreal. You have access to all the technical elements of creating a scene, just like you would if you were designing an actual game level, but then you can go into play mode and the director can control the scene using a gamepad. You also have the ability to set up the scene using animation and control that animation, which allows the creative team to get the precise shot they're trying to achieve with so much more precision and speed. Another goal they're working toward, in a similar vein, is when setting up scenes like this, they want you to be able to add props, lighting, cameras, and everything you need to build the scene with a simple drag and drop setup, as well as modify the elements in terms of scale, rotation, location, and so on, through a web browser, and then be able to save it so everything is available the next time the project is opened. This is amazing for remote work, which is becoming more and more popular. They also gave an example of live action, which you can see short snippets of, but they didn't go into any detail about the tools that allow them to achieve these results. They did cover a few other small things, but that's the majority of the main highlights. Overall, I would say that these are pretty exciting changes, and I'm excited to see how things progress as Unreal creates more and more tools for filmmakers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and if you would like to see more videos like this, just let me know what you'd like me to cover next. This is Tech Art Academy signing off. Have a great day and stay educated.